When we were discussing regression analysis, we talked about residuals. We also talked about the Minanova. So residuals are important. What residuals are is the amount of distance away from the mean that we haven't been able to explain in an observed data point. And so what can be discovered when we actually analyze those residuals? Well, many people talk about residual effects or these very unusual outliers, very far away from the average, and some people will call them outliers. And as a result, many people have said, well, just eliminate the outliers. We don't want to do that because these very unusual effects actually can be the ones that create Bob or Wow, depending on the measure. And so what we want to say is, let's understand the rationale behind these unusual effects or these residuals. Well, what should the data actually look like in the residuals in a well-behaved regression analysis? Well, the answer is very simple. When we take a look at noise, for instance, in a statistic, what we see is if we reduce the signal to noise ratio and we optimize signal, noise should become zero. And so what we should see is Gaussian noise, normally distributed noise around a zero point. If not, what we should see is there may be an assignable cause of variation. We call that special cause variation. That means it could be another factor. So if we analyze factors A, B, and C, there could be a factor D, E, or F lurking in those residual noise that we haven't actually seen and analyzed. That's the red X we said we needed to look for. So residuals should have constant variance. They should be normal. And the residual should actually not exhibit any sort of pattern. Any pattern in the residuals would indicate that there's coherence there. Coherence would indicate the presence of a signal that has not been included in this information. So what we have to do before we eliminate any outliers, we have to really earn the right to say we really want to eliminate that. That means we've identified the special cause of variation which created it and we understand the mechanism by which we can control that special cause of variation. Unless we can do that, we have no right to drop any data out of our original analysis and certainly not particularly when we're trying to characterize where the data come from. So what we start seeing is the residuals, we can get some insight into missing factors. So they give us this hint about the problem. So effects that we could see, we could see patterns indicating coherency in the signal. And so when, if we see coherency patterns in the residual, it means there's another factor out there. We could see clustering in the residuals. And that might indicate that what we have is we have covariance happening. And so we've actually maybe done something where we don't have independence in the data selection. Maybe we have trends in the residuals. Again, that would be one of these indicators of coherence. Maybe we have oscillation where it's moving back and forth and we're the victims of some instability in the process. Or maybe there's even seasonality in the residuals, that there's a change happening according to some sort of time-dependent component that is of a regular basis, but it's not captured in the analysis that we have. So if we take a look at this, this is data coming out of the what's called the, the uh, residuals plot. And we see there's four different panels, if you will, in this mini-tab plot. And what we see is we see the first panel, the upper left panel, is a normal probability plot of the residuals. So what we should see is normally distributed data. All of the red dots should be on the line. And what we see is, hmm, doesn't look like it. The graph below that, we should see the histogram of the residuals, and it should have a symmetric shape around the center, and then it would be normal, but we don't see that. And then we should take a look at the residuals versus the fitted values, and we shouldn't see any patterns. It doesn't look evenly distributed with no pattern here. And then we should see in this fourth one, residuals versus order the data, we should see randomness, but here we see tight coupling, which might indicate data is autocorrelated. Oh my dear, this doesn't look very good. So what could we do to understand the process? Well, we can do some other things in Minitab. One of them we can do is when we're doing this fitted line plot, we can go to this storage. And so storage says we can store the residuals and fits from the analysis. And so we choose the four and one plot of the residuals. That tells you the standard approach towards analysis. Under storage, we can store the residuals in the fits, and this allows us to run additional tests. So what might we want to do? 
Well, we might want to run probability plot, and that will then give us the confidence intervals to see what's the 95% confidence band. We might want to do the stat graphical summary to get a better understanding of the normality tests of the data and the different types of statistics we can get by analyzing it more comprehensively. Under stat control charts, variable charts for individuals, we can do an eye chart and say, are there any special causes after we turn on under the options, the special tests? And then under stat time series, partial autocorrelation, we can take a look at the data, and this will take a look at the differences in the shift between the data. And so between adjacent data points, how much of a change is there? And if there's very little change, we'll start seeing the data might actually be autocorrelated. In other words, it's coming from basically the same sample. And so we take a look at this and we say, okay, here is my graphical summary. And I see that the mean and the median are pretty close to each other. I can take a look at the Anderson-Darling test. I said, wait a minute, it's not really normal. Normal would be greater than 0.05. I take a look at the data here and I say, well, it is within the 95% confidence interval, but this tells me much better than just taking a look at the output that we get from this uh, normality test in the 4-up chart, which does not have the 95% confidence interval. So again, we get a better graphical view by doing this. Here I take a look at the eye charts of the residuals. With all of the tests turned on, there are no red dots. This is there's nothing actually special happening in this data set. And then I take a look at the partial autocorrelation, and again, there is no pattern in terms of the data. So what I see is there doesn't appear to be any shift, trend, or seasonality, which I could all detect on the partial autocorrelation function. And so when I take a look at this, I say, well, sometimes I do see something different. So here I have a fitted line plot. And I take a look at the eye chart of the residuals from that, and I see, whoa, there is a pattern happening in a particular range of the data. Why did that happen? And so I see between 140 and 170, something happened. So we see, let's go back and take a look at the process again. What's happening in that particular interval of the process? How is that data actually caused problems for the rest of the analysis? Notice that the rest of the analysis is reasonably in a state of control. So the residuals only are having this effect in one particular range. So now we just learn something more from that data by going and looking at it. So again, when you have a poor explanation of variation, in other words, your R squared is not above 80%, always take a look at the residuals. Look at it in the standard way and maybe look at it in some of these other ways to uncover what are the patterns that are hidden from your eyesight that may give you a hint something else is actually happening in the data worthy of your discussion. What do you do about that? Go back to your fishbone diagram. Take a look. What are the factors that could affect you? Take a look at the individual data analysis. Are there some factors moving in the way that you would expect them to? Maybe do some one-off regression analysis or Take a look at best subsets regression. Now, we're not going to cover best subsets regression here, but if you use the uh, help function, you can very easily see how to use best subsets as a way to identify combinations of factors that Minitab automatically processes to tell you what would actually be a better combination of things to explain and increase the R squared in terms of your understanding of the data. So, what we're going to do now is let's take a look at some residuals analysis examples in terms of Minitab.